All right, so thanks for joining me on this training and allowing for the recording here. Uh, the first sh screen that I want to share with you as we get into this is if we go to uh, our Elevate site, all right? I want to show you guys where to be able to find these forms. If we go to the Elevate site and we go to the Marketing Center or the Marketing tab, you know, you've got that tab over here on the left, then right here you can go to the Marketing Center, all right? And when you go to the Marketing Center, that brings up this page and there's a whole bunch of things. So over on the, you can just scroll all the way down and you've got a section on planning, okay? And if you go to that section on planning, then you've got an equity success plan or a business plan there. And when you click on that, you have an option for an interactive success plan that you can download. So when you download that interactive success plan, I'm going to share a different screen with you now. It will bring up this. Okay, you all see this? It says titled 2019 Breakthrough Broker Success Plan. Do you all see that? Yeah, okay, good. So once we have this plan, and I'm going to walk you through this pretty quickly, I've pre-filled out some numbers that I think are pretty decent approximations. Um, but this will help you get some focus in your business on what you need to do, okay? And then I'll so show you some forms that I developed myself that aren't as fancy. This is much prettier looking than what I've been able to put together because I can build stuff on Excel and that's about it. And if it needs to look pretty, I don't do that very well. So I'm just good at practical stuff. So we've got this plan here and let's go through how this can help us stay focused. So first of all, it's got a little introduction here and it's about the numbers. How much money do you wanna make and how much business do you have to have to make that happen, all right? So we, first of all, need to see how much do we need to do to survive? What are our living expenses each month? So I put in some numbers here. These aren't reflective of my numbers, but I think they're decent approximations of what somebody might have. So, you know, we've got our mortgage payment, our car payment, gas, um, <clears throat> you know, a little bit of maintenance averaged out over the year, along with insurance, electric bills, gas bills, all of those other things. So we end up with about $6,500 a month in expenses. And we bring that down here, 65 times 12, that gives us about $78,000 a year that we would need to make to meet these expenses. However, there's a few things we still need to consider, primarily taxes. Okay, let's say that we fall into a 30% tax bracket and we want to take home, then we want to take home $100,000. So if we go back to this, we need to make 78,000 roughly. But that doesn't give us any wiggle room. It doesn't give us room for, I mean, I put a little bit of in here for travel, but it's not really vacation. Um, you know, there's no room for gifts. There's no room for what if my, you know, what if I have a major breakdown, whether it's in my home or, you know, I need to replace the heating, the furnace, the roof, something like that. So I want a little bit of a pad in here. So let's say that my target take home income is 100,000. That should meet my bills and give me a tiny little bit of breathing room on top of that. So if I've got a goal of 100,000 and I need to take into account my tax bracket, then after putting in a 30% tax bracket, I need to actually be making about $143,000, okay? Then we've got a few other expenses associated with our business, okay? The first one is the cut that you're on. And this is where it's a great time to be with equity real estate because we're taking, you know, $499 a transaction. And if you just join me, if you could mute yourself, please, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so we need to, again, we're taking this number 143. And let's say that our average commission is around $10,000. I just did that because it made the math easy. That's roughly a 5% commission split, 95.5, okay? So if we do a 5% commission split and we need to make 143, then you know commissions are going to be roughly $7,000 that we're paying to the brokerage. And then we've got a couple little fees down here with the board. And again, I want to highlight some things. If you haven't been with other brokerages, 
most of them have desk fees. They have E&O insurance. Some will have other franchise fees, things like that on top of it. So you would want to count for all of those. But again, with equity, we don't have any of these other miscellaneous fees. You pay about a thousand bucks a year for the board, about 500 bucks for the MLS. So your fees are very, very low here, which again, helps you stay in business. So we take about 150,500 from here, plus another 1500 there. That gives us, let's see. Uh, I put in, oh, I did 151.5 and 1500. So, but basically 153 to 152. Okay. So that is our actual target of what we want to hit with our um, gross commission income. Okay. So our gross commissions need to be around 153. Now we're going to break down how we're going to get that out of our transactions. So I saw a commission shift over this crazy market time where a lot of commissions, rather than getting 3% aside, a lot of times we're just getting 2.5%. I've certainly seen lower than that. Certainly a lot of agents are getting more, but let's say that, that we uh, roll with this shift where we're seeing more and more downward pressure on commissions and we're getting 2.5%. So if we've got a, a gross commission target of 153,000, then we're gonna need to have about 6.1% million in our target sales volume. All right. So how many homes is that? Well, it depends on your market. So if we took the average sales price in Utah, which is getting pretty close to 500,000, makes our math easy, and our target sales volume is 6 million, then we've got to do roughly 12 transactions throughout the year to hit this income goal that we have. Now, when I did this, when I started out in, in business about 20 years ago, uh, my average sales price was 150000 And so I needed to, but the average commission was 3% back then, but I needed to do double this to hit my goal. Okay, in order for me to hit 100000 I needed to close 24 transactions a year. And that would have given me 100000 um, kind of a net commission income where I hadn't paid taxes on it yet. So that was my net income. We're trying to get you a gross income of 100,000 because we've got bills at 78 and we need a little bit of wiggle room beyond that. So we're gonna shoot for 12 transactions a year. And let's say that we split it evenly between buyers and sellers. And if you're making this for yourself and you prefer to work all with sellers, you like being a listing agent or the opposite, you prefer to be a buyer's agent, then you can adjust those numbers as you like. But of course, if I'm shooting for 12 transactions and I'm splitting it evenly, I've got six of each. And now we've got to take into account some reality, okay? If I'm trying to do six seller-sided transactions, what is my success rate? Let's say that I take a listing. I don't sell every home that I list. Sometimes the sellers just don't have the room. We're pricing it high. If they can sell it high, great. If they can't sell it at that price, then they just can't sell. They're going to have to do something else. Maybe they'll stay there. Maybe they'll rent it out but I'm not gonna be successful selling everything that I list. So let's say that I have an 80% success rate. I'm gonna to need to take, instead of six listings, I'm gonna to need to take seven and a half. So how many appointments are am I going to need to go to? Well, this again would depend on experience. When I was a brand new agent, I would put in about a 50% success rate and I would land one out of every two appointments I went on. As I got more experience, those numbers would climb up. But let's say I rounded up my listings from seven and a half to eight. I needed to make, I need to get eight listings in order to close six. That means I need to go out on roughly 11 listing appointments in order to get my eight listings and have my six closings of sellers. If we do the same thing with buyers, what's my success rate with my buyer presentation? And again, the, there will be some variety here based on an experienced agent versus a brand new agent and you can kind of gauge your own experience. If you're a brand new agent, I would put 50% here as well as a starting number, and then we're gonna track it over time. But I'm gonna to need to target uh, and try to get eight clients here. If I go back up, I'm trying to get 11 down here. So roughly I'm needing about 19 clients in order for this to happen. From here, what we wanna do is we need to identify some of the activities we're going to be trying to become proficient in. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. All right, uh, I'm a big fan of Buffini, so sphere of influence is right at the top 
for a lot of my activities. Um, but there's lots of things that you can do. I would not want you to try and do all of these. Okay, pick three different things that you're going to do well, that you're going to work at becoming an expert in. And I like three things because some people can do one thing just extremely well. I know some people that are just farming and they do it so well, that's where all their business comes from. I personally like a little variety. I like to try a couple of different things. Um, most of us don't join this business with a big enough sphere of influence to wholly focus on that. You know, if we go into Buffini's training, if any of you are fans of his and you've done that, he focuses exclusively on his sphere of influence. But when we start out, most of us don't have a sphere of influence that would allow us to focus exclusively on that. We need to do other ways. We need to expand that sphere of influence to the point where it's large enough that we could then fully shift into Buffini's method and focus on it. So for me, you know, when I built my business, it was for sell by owners, it was farming, and it was sphere of influence. And my sphere of influence was very small. So mostly I was doing for sell by owners and I was knocking doors. Okay, the two, I think, hardest bucket hauling activities that this industry has to offer. And at least, even though it wasn't fun, at least I know I can do it. Okay, and every once in a while, I'll still go out and do it. In fact, um, last couple of weeks, I've gone out with one of my agents and we'll knock doors together for an hour a week. This week, we're going to do two hours. Um, and it's just, it's good experience. Okay. It keeps you out there. And I, and I try to do that because I want to be, um, I want to know that I can still do hard things. A lot of you are great at social media. I've added that in here, um, because it's kind of a shift with the world, but I'm not great at it still. But at least I have things that I want to work on. So for me, I would want to work primarily with my sphere of influence. Again, I like testing myself with farming, getting out, knocking doors, building relationships in my neighborhood. And then there's the social media aspect, which is something that I need to personally improve. Once I have this, then it brings me down to a one page success plan. And I could I didn't carry over the, those activities over here. I can copy and paste those. But this is the one page that I would print out. And I would just tape up right next to my computer so that I could have clear direction each day for it. Now, before Equity provided us with this marketing center and stuff, I had kind of built my own. And I'm going to show you backwards how I did that. So I had this little monthly business plan guide where I did this same thing. So I had my income goal yearly, but I didn't have the tools that this cool interactive program we just went through did. And so I had a goal of 100000 but I hadn't accounted for taxes and I hadn't accounted for a lot of these expenses and stuff. So I would recommend going through that interactive plan and getting your numbers from there. But let's say that you've got an income goal then in here of you know 150,000 gross commission income. And then you've got your transaction goal. Of you've got to have 12 transactions to hit that. That's obviously one transaction a month. And in order to get one transaction a month closed, I'm going to need to have at least two clients a month. In order to get two clients a month, I would like to have one appointment every week. I can land 50% of my appointments, get two clients a month, and go from there. So if I'm going to get one appointment a week, how many contacts do I need to make each day? And I would say about 10. Okay. And again, back in the day when I actually did this for myself, my daily call goal was 20 because I had to close double the volume that we have to today because of the appreciating home prices and subsequent greater commissions. So my goal used to be 20 calls a day. Now it would need to be 10 calls a day. And then I had a little section down here that I would use for tracking. You know, how much contacts did I actually make that week? How many appointments were set that week? Just to see if my plan that I'd made here was actually playing out the way I thought it would. Okay, so this was a little page that I would... Um, print out each month and I would track as the weeks and months went by how my successes were actually um, translating into reality, okay? And then I had a little spot down here, highlights from my month review, because I always like to do a little personal review to try to identify what's been working really well and what isn't. Now, to track these things, I have a weekly plan. So for a full-time agent, I would say 500 points minimum, part-time agents, 300 points, and you can edit this however you like. By the way, these forms are all available for you on the Elevate 
website. If you go to the training tab and then elite agent training, that's my stuff. And you can have access to these forms there. So I assigned a point total to different activities. You know, if I'm calling my sphere of influence, I would get five points a call. My goal would be 300 points, uh, or, well, for a full-time agent, 500 points a week, which would be 60 a day. So if all I did was calls, I would need to make 12 contacts a day in order to hit my 60 points for that day and get 500 points for the week, okay? But besides just making my calls, there's other things that I can be doing, all right? You know, I can work with my sphere of influence or, excuse me, farming um, for sell by owner contacts, each one of those things. Again, I could get five points for each one. Um, but if I actually set a buyer appointment or a listing appointment, I could get 10 points for that. So <clears throat> if I were, you know, if I'd made five calls that day, that'd be 25 points. And then I got a uh, buyer appointment. There's another 10. That would be 35 points. I'm still, what is that? 25 shy of my goal. So if I set the appointment and went on the appointment, there's another 10. If I'm going out showing buyers, I'd get points for that. So basically I tried to assign a point value for different value added tasks that I can be engaged in. These tasks helped me to stay focused on the things that mattered because it's really easy in this business to find yourself surfing the internet or the MLS for hours, feeling like you're working, but you're not actually contacting people or moving them through that process of contacting them to get an appointment, to get a signed contract with them and then get that signed contract moved through to closing. Because that's really the process that needs to happen. And if I go back to this um, monthly business plan guide, that's what keeps my focus there. I need to be making 10 calls a day. Those 10 calls a day need to be yielding me one appointment every week. And this is how I'm keeping that focus with this is I'm, I'm making sure that I have those things top of mind. Like when I'm making my phone calls, I need to have a goal in mind of if I hear anybody that's kind of remotely interested in real estate and buying or selling, I want to get an appointment. I want to get in the door and sit down and talk with them. That's where I have a chance to win business. Okay. So a lot of us are doing social media stuff, but we're not capitalizing on it. We, we interact with people a lot, but our goal needs to be to get an appointment so that we can actually convey our true value that we're trying to accomplish here. So um, I've got my goals and then I built this little daily form, okay? And this is a, something that I printed off. I've got a three ring binder and I would just print off this form every day and I would give a little check box, you know, have I gone through my goals and my affirmations so that I know what's important to me today and I'm working actively towards creating the type of person that I wanna become. Have I done my exercise for the day? Uh, if I'm sitting in front of this form, then I'm planning and prioritizing the day so I can check that off. And again, I always want to take a little bit of time to fill my head with new knowledge. It helps me think new thoughts and progress me through growth. Okay, so those are things that I want to have happen every single day. And then I want to start a day with gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. And so I want to list in detail five things that I'm thankful for. So rather than say I'm grateful for my children, why am I grateful for my children? What is it that they bring to my life? I, want, I, I don't just want to rush through this. I want to take time to think what brings the value to me. Why, why do I appreciate my wife? Why do I appreciate my job? What is it specifically about it that I like? And when I immerse myself a little bit more in what it is I appreciate about those things, then it, it causes me to start my day with just a better attitude, okay? And when I can have that attitude of gratitude throughout the day, I'm more attractive to people, okay? It's easier to talk to people. I remember why I'm on the phone with them because the thing that I love about my job is the ability to help people. And so when people call me with problems, I'm not upset that I'm dealing with problems. I remember this is why I'm grateful, okay? And then I've got the top 20. These are the people that I was gonna call through the day. And the reason why I wanted to write this down on a sheet of paper and if you're using now KV Core, which I'm going to take you to in just a second and share that screen with you, then I can actually have this on my app and I don't need to write it down. So KV Core can really help me 
with planning my day out and I can set how many contacts I want to make. Again, whether I'm full or part time, it might be five, 10 or 20. But I want to be able to have this be portable with me and take this with me, because if I have a little bit of time, whether I'm driving uh, and I have a, you know, hands free speaker in my car, there's a lot of calls that I can make that otherwise I would just have as lost time while I'm driving. OK, I might get to an appointment 10 or 15 minutes early. Traffic wasn't as heavy as I thought. I have time to make a quick phone call. Maybe a client ditches me and now I've got a couple of hours that were, would otherwise be lost time, but because I have a list that's portable with me, then I can do that. Now my fab five, these are my top five activities that I can do throughout the day that help me become the person that I want to become. So these could be pop buys, this could be getting a pre-qualification letter, it can, it can be personal, business, whatever, but, it, but it's directly tied to your affirmations, building the type of person that you want to build and become. And then every day you have a chance to um, record some notes, things that you did well, things that you can improve on. And honestly, it becomes a little scratch pad for phone numbers, things that I need to eventually make sure that they make it to my uh, contact management software. So I'm gonna stop sharing this screen with you and jump over and share This one. So we're going to jump over to KV Core. And if you've been with me before, then you've seen this. Uh, you've seen how we do this. So if we go down to my profile, right, and I go to my settings, so you can see this daily call task creation right here that I'm creating 20 tasks a day. I can edit that and I can change that to 10 on here if I want to, that I need to make 10 contacts a day. Uh, and it's gonna send me a little email at 8 a.m. And I can access that via the uh, mobile app that comes with this as well. And so every day at 8 a.m., I'm gonna get 10 people that I should be contacting that will come to me as an email, that will come to me as a uh, on my mobile app. And this helps me know who I need to contact. So. Um, and again, it's based off of if I go to my dashboard, then it's based off of a lot of recent activity too. things that, you know, whether people have been active on my website, they've responded to texts or emails that I've sent out. So KV Core can actually help me in establishing that plan and following through with that plan. OK, does that make sense? OK. Cool. So any questions that you guys have? I'm building a business plan. So let's talk real life really quick. I'm going to actually make the training a little bit shorter today because what I would like you to do is take this next half hour that you had planned out and, and being here for training. I would like you to see if you can work through and build a success plan, narrow it down to one page and literally tape it up next to your computer to help you maintain focus on the activities you need to be doing today, okay? So if you need to be making five calls a day or 10 calls a day, I want you to look up there and I don't want you to quit that day or, or end that day until those calls have been made. I want you to take this time, the next 30 minutes to go into KB Core and set th that little setting over there in the top right that will assign those calls to you as you work through your database. And it gives you, it, it's a smart system. So it's gonna say, this call's been assigned to you because you haven't ever contacted this person. And it shows that you haven't contacted them because you just imported your database and it's a new system for you. So it doesn't know yet, but as you interact with them, then it will, it will work through your contact database and it will find the people that, have, that are being neglected. Okay, and it helps you bring a database back to life. That's what that system does for you. So let's talk about why we do this, why we go through this work, because it's a job. And this is a part of acting like a professional. You don't ever start a job out without an objective in mind. There is no successful corporation out there that just wakes up in the morning and says, well, I don't know, what should I do today? And if there isn't anything to do, then we just jump on social media and play around with that for a few hours. Um, or we go golfing or whatever. And a lot of agents do live their lives that way. 
They don't know what to do. We need to have this focus if we're going to act like an actual business, okay? Because this is what businesses do. They start out, they have a plan. This is what we're going to do. Then they incorporate that plan and they track their results. So that's why I like using that little weekly sheet because I can just do little hash marks. Every time I talk to somebody, I do a little hash mark or I carry that piece of paper with me around uh, through the day and I make notes on it. How many people have I talked to today? What are the notes from those conversations? At the end of the day, I want to come back to my contact management software and I want to make sure that I've typed those notes in with those people and that I've scheduled a follow up so that again, when tomorrow comes and I was supposed to call this person back or what if it was two weeks away, I don't want to forget that. And if I can start getting into these business habits of when I talk to people, I make a little note, um, whether that's on your phone or you're actually printing out this paper and carrying it around with you as I've done, then I come back and I load that into my software because if I'm just running by notes, my desk is going to be covered with sticky notes and those are going to get lost. But if I get used to putting those into a system like KV Core and that system and I'm training myself every day to wake up and say, okay, what are the calls I need to make today? That system put that call in there. This is something that you assigned yourself to do. You know, you talked to this person two weeks ago. They said they would be gone for a little while, but follow up with them in a couple of weeks, follow up with them in a couple of months, whatever. But you didn't forget it. And you're following through and you're tracking your results. And lo and behold, you're acting like a real business person. And you'll be able to see and track results and make minor adjustments as you go through your day and your week, you'll be able to make these minor adjustments to how you're doing things, identifying things that work well, identifying things that don't work well, that you can then weed out. But that's how you discover what works for you. And real estate is a very personal thing. You know, everybody in here has a different set of skills that they've brought into this career. And they have a different set of skills that they need to learn that they didn't have when they got into this career. And as you actually track and measure your results on a daily basis, it teaches you where you can improve. But if you don't do these things, if you're not actually acting like a business where you have a plan and you track what you've done throughout the day, then you get to the end of the day and you're just as exhausted as anybody else. You just don't have any clear feedback for yourself. What did I do well? What can I improve? Okay. You don't have anything to look back on and say, this was a good day and this really worked. Let's do more of that. And you'll do that for five or six months. You'll be like, I don't know. It's just not working for me. And I don't know why. I've tried everything. Okay. But you should know. You should know within a couple of weeks if something isn't working. You should be shifting within a couple of weeks, not waiting five or six months and still not having any idea why it isn't working for you. Okay. Businesses don't act that way. They track where they spend their time. They track where they spend their marketing dollars. They track what leads come from those efforts. So as you're doing these things, as you're making your calls, you're tracking it. And that tracking is a part of just, I don't know, maturing in this industry rather than kind of stumbling through not knowing how to be self-employed. You're giving yourself, you're treating yourself like a business person. You're, you're creating your own boundaries that you're working within to help you be successful. So, all right, we're going to end now 20 minutes early. I hope you guys take the next 20 minutes to go through. If you don't have a business plan, get one. If you don't know exactly how many calls you need to make each day to hit your goals, nail that down today and start tracking those calls every single day. Use the software to help you. And then don't end a day without having met your goal. And if you're meeting your goal, but you're not hitting your, let, let's say that I made 10 calls a day all throughout the week and I didn't set one appointment, that tells me things, right? Maybe I can call my broker and say, hey, I called 50 people this week. I actually talked to them. I didn't set one appointment. I probably need some help with my script. Can you help me out? Sure. And now I've got some targeted focus on what I need to learn and improve on. I've got a skill that I can identify needs improvement. So I work on my script. 
And now all of a sudden I've got a better script that I'm practicing. I'm still making my 50 calls and I'm actually getting appointments, but I'm not converting those appointments into clients because my presentation skills are weak. But again, because I've tracked things, I know where the break in the chain lies and I know where I need to focus my learning and my study and asking other people, hey, I need help with my presentation. What can I do better? And that allows me to improve my presentation. And now I'm making my calls. I'm getting appointments. I'm landing my presentations. And now I move down the next step in the chain, which is actually getting the home sold or getting my buyers into a home, which is a different set of skills. Okay. And we talk about all of those different sets of skills in this training as it evolves. And that's what we're doing. Okay. As real estate professionals, as self-employed people, we are evolving and we're growing, but we need to do it in a targeted fashion. So hopefully this will help you with that. All right. Thanks you guys for joining me today. Do take the next 20 minutes and build out your plan. All right. Start every day with a little bit of focus on what am I going to do today and use the software to help identify the people that you need to contact. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Eric.